Hi everyone, this is John Dickinson. Welcome back to another Blender modeling tutorial. This time we're going to just add the screw to the foot peg we created in the last tutorial. If you haven't done the foot peg tutorial, that's okay. You can still follow along with this. And if you have done it, just open up the file and work along with me. So the first thing to do is just to make sure that this screw object is turned on. We're going to use that as a guide. So that's not actually going to be our screw. We're going to make the screw from scratch. Shift space just to show the wireframe. I'm going to tab, make sure I'm in vert mode, and just make sure that vert here is selected. If you haven't got this particular model, that's okay. Just work at world zero. Those of you who do, just make sure, pressing Shift S, that you choose cursor to selected. So we have our 3D cursor at that point. Okay, tab, and just deselect. Shift A. And we want a circle. I've already got my settings in here. So make it at 24 verts. Point one's okay. A triangle fan. Rotation X 180 and Z minus 90. Okay, just going to solo that. And next, you'll need to have the mesh tools add on activated in your preferences. This comes with Blender by default. Under face tools, we're going to use cut faces and we're going to use four cuts. I'm going to come in one, two, and between two and three, control R, we're going to put a loop cut. K for the knife tool. And by the way, I'm using Blender 3.0 beta here now. So I've moved on from 2.93. So some of the shortcuts will probably be different in the tutorials going forward, but I'll point them out wherever I can. So click, and we're going to cut out a hex shape. Just being sure to click at the right points here, just like that. Spacebar to accept. Now we need to dissolve some edges. So it's going to shift alt click on these ones and these ones and these ones. Control X. Okay, so there's our hex. All right, so now we need to make the dome shape. So let's just select this vert here. Let's come to a side view. Make sure that proportional editing is turned on and sphere is selected. So you can either use the move tool and drag on the Z, or you can just press G. I'm just going to choose my tweak mode there just to hide the gizmo. And it just makes that still selected. Yep. Just hit the G key and hit Z and drag up. Roll the mouse wheel like that to just make sure you don't move those outer verts there. If it's too big, they're going to move up. Just want to get it just inside so we get that dome shape. Something like that. Excellent. All right, so now we need to put this into a mirror modifier. We will add modifier, mirror, we're going to put it on the X and the Y. And we're going to drag some verts. GG. What I'll do first, though, before I do that, just make sure that proportional editing is not on. The shortcut for that is O, by the way. GG. Just drag that in. I'm just going to eyeball this. Not as precise as I would normally like it, but it's... um. It's only a couple of verts, so it doesn't really matter. And just by putting it in the mirror, it just means we're not dragging more verts than we need to. Something like that. Okay, so next what we'll do is just apply that. Tab. And just select these faces there, like that. And we're going to press E for extrude. And... ZZ just to drag it down on the local axis. Let's go down about that far. That'll do. And we can probably just, let's see, use flatten under loop tools just to flatten it out like that. I to inset. And loop tool circle. Got to change the angle for this. To make sure that's 
should be zero actually been playing with the angle like that and we can probably just scale that a bit so s for scale and shift z just to make sure we scale on the x and the y but i've got to make sure that median point is selected so s shift z and just scale that in a little bit like that okay so let's do a little bit more cut faces and mesh tools cut faces and we'll just select this bird here once again come to a side view alt z so we can see that o to turn on proportional editing g and z and we've got to roll our mouse wheel because we only want to affect the ones on the inside here maybe something like that okay now you could come in here and then just select every other edge and just control x to create quads or you could just select these ones delete faces I'll click an edge to select the loop and just do a grid fill control F like that let's now just drop this into a sub D surface and tab shade smooth that's looking pretty good all right so next selecting these edges control B to bevel just make sure that you've got that extra loop in there holding down P and just make sure you drag to the right to make this nice solid bevel here probably something like that let's tab into object mode again there we go now we could put an extra loop in here like that okay so bring everything back I'm going to turn off the screw now I've got to make sure this fits properly I'm just going to scale this up slightly I'll click E for extrude, ZZ. Just bring that out a little bit like that. Maybe a little bit more. I'm going to move that up. Once again, making sure proportional editing is turned off. Okay, so once again, E, right mouse button, S to scale. Bring that in there like that. Alt click, Alt click, control B. That. And we'll bring this all the way through. Obviously, if you've not done the previous tutorial, you won't have this as a guide. E, C, Z. Through to the other side. We're not going to do the thread. Going to solid that for a sec. Control B. The way we can do this is F to fill, I to inset. Going to pull this out like that to make it look like the you know, the end of this, the thread there, and we'll go one in there delete those faces grid fill control B control B to bevel
That'll stick out the other side. Might actually take it back in a little bit. Make sure all of this is selected. Bring that back in. Like that. And it's nice to be able to see the edges of the holes where possible. Just checking this out here. I've got a little bit of problem going on there. Got a couple of extra edges. Not sure how I got those. Do another one, control R. What we can probably do is, let's see, just select these faces, three. Drag and select those and just inset these. And it'd be nice to just loosen those up a little bit. Now, we've done this in a previous tutorial using sculpt mode. You can come into sculpt mode and you can create a face set from selected like that. Come down to your slide relax, F, change the size of the brush and making sure that under brush, under auto masking, that face sets is selected. And then just holding down shift and loosening that up. Like that. Now I'm going to do a tutorial on relaxing and smoothing so we can look at other options as well. Let's come back to edit mode. You can probably just stick a loop around there as well. Just hit E and F just to make sure that's even. Tab. Okay. So just pulling out this part here, just extruding that out, just makes it look a little more realistic. Gives the texture something else to highlight. And like I said, you can just see the whole little bit. So the screw is just slightly smaller. Now we've just got to move this one into place. So go tab again, Alt C. And we'll just bring that back in. I can't really see the other one. There it is just there. Don't want to have it too deep. It'll get kind of hidden. Bring it out a little bit. Yeah, something like that. It's nice. We went to all the trouble to do that ball and that inset. It's really nice to have that pushed into the other geometry. It looks really good. Very nice. Let's just turn on cavity. Now you could probably go in and, you know, delete the you know the thread or what's standing in for the thread and just leave the end bit there and the screw head there if you were animating this and you were you know you wanted to pull that out then you'd have to put the thread in there and you'd have to leave the you know the entire thread we probably also need to make sure that we have auto smoothing turned on and there we go so that's one approach for modeling this button head hex socket screw i hope you found that useful be sure to like and subscribe and I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial.